my God. Jeez. I'm glad you said that because I'm like, it might not be early for most of you guys, but it's early for me. It's early. It, it might as well be four o'clock in the day of morning for me. <laughs> thank you for having a drink with us. Yeah, thanks um, for having me. I appreciate it. Ooh. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> You have this like life on the road, you're on tour. I'm curious actually, when's the last time you just like sat down one-on-one -on -one with someone and had a drink? Hmm. Do you get a lot of alone time or no? <laughs> <laughs> um, I do actually. I think uh, Libby and I kind of designed this, this lifestyle where every time I'm, I'm at home, like we, we promise each other like the evening. Like we sit down, we Netflix and chill. So that's like our quality time. That's our like, let's catch up. Let's let the world just step away for a minute. That's our, that's our retreat. That's uh -huh. like our vacation. And we make an effort to do that like once a day. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, which is a luxury I get. Yeah, like yeah. it's not, it's, it's, it, that's about to disappear <laughs> pretty quickly, pretty soon. But while we, while we have the time, while I'm in town, it's, it's, we, we make an uh -huh. effort to do that. Right. I'm curious, um, what's the key to making like a long distance relationship work then? I've been really good at it and I've been really terrible at it. It's, it's just, I don't know, you just, when you love somebody, you, you, you figure it out, you make it work yeah. one day at a time. Everything's different. There's no consistency in our world. Uh -huh. You know, there's no routine to be made sure. in any way. So it's, it's, it's just communication, honesty too. You know, there, there's no time to sort of dance around something. If you feel something, you talk about it, you bring it up quickly and you work through I like it. like that. Cause yeah. if you just let it sit with you, it, it's the worst. Into, yes, yes. It's the worst. It's toxic. But we've gotten in a rhythm where we, we talk about things pretty pretty quickly and pretty efficiently. You know, we get through oh. it, yeah. And I love your new song, Yesterday's Song. Thank you. And I've heard you talk about this next chapter and like letting certain things go. What do you want to define like this next chapter? Ooh, I think, hmm, I was going to say vulnerability, but even more than that, uh, transparency. You know, just, yeah, just trueness. I don't know what the words are. It's hard to explain it, but. Um, there's a lot that, you know, I've, I've written a hundred songs for this already and I'm still writing for it. Um, and I've gone through a lot to sort of make this, this project and, and personally, not just like artistically, mm -hmm. like human wise. I've been kind of beat up and had to get back up and figure it out. And, and I think that's been really good for me. I've, I've found a lot about myself that I didn't know. Yeah. I think we all kind of go through that between like 18 and 25. Like that's pretty normal, mm -hmm. you know, to kind of go through this massive life change. And I feel like I went through that sort of, you know, but with a, with a guitar in my hand. And so that's kind of what this record is. And I think if anything, I, I want people to hear um, even more of the human than, than they did on the first record, uh -huh. even more of those things less of the sort of artists, the marketing, the, all that stuff. I want people to hear like the realness of it. Yeah. You know? What has it been like? So you've reached success at a, a young age. What has it been like to kind of be, grow up in front of the cameras? I'm, I'm, I feel blessed because while I, you know, while you would expect something like that to be an issue, um, or not an issue, but while you would expect that to be part of the story, it's not as much a part of my story as I feel like a lot of people that I know. Okay. Um, I was really blessed that a lot of people I mean, I'm not, like, it's not, it's not crazy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, it's not what you might expect. And, um, and a lot of people respect the personal element. You know, being in Nashville, I mean, that's, there's a lot of, there's just good people Have in you, the industry, so. Yeah, I'm, I was wondering who in the industry has maybe given you advice for how to, like, hmm. grow up in the public eye and, like, as you evolve in your career, if anyone, if you've had any drinks with someone who's <laughs> been through it. Uh, there's a few people, that, honestly, I can credit you know, a billion people. Um, there's been a lot of people, honestly, um, my team, my band, people on my label have been actually pretty aware of the human element and they've been just incredible people to mm -hmm. me, even through the struggle of, you know, working on this project. And artist-wise, um, Elton John, actually. Wow. Yeah, I know. So I did, a, I did a, a tribute album with for him he wasn't there obviously because um, it was kind of a tribute to with with Peter Asher on uh, Goodbye Yellow Brick Road and Elton reached out just out of the blue one morning it was a Sunday morning it was an unknown call and I don't know why I think Peter Peter always called me with an unknown number so it was 10 o'clock and it was always at 10 o'clock on a Sunday morning and so I answered it because I was like it's probably Peter well it was a you know British voice but it was it was Elton and we talked for a minute <laughs> and he gave me his contact information and so he said you know reach out when you're in LA or whatever. And we were there for the Grammys. We had dinner together. So we started kind of talking a lot and kind of being buds. And, and I, I literally call him when I'm like, I don't know what to do. <laughs> and wow. he's been a huge, like, kind of talk me through some scenarios. And it's always super quick. It's always like 30 seconds of like, 
awesome life advice and it's yeah. like, okay, I gotta go. <laughs> it's like always super efficient and super effective, but um, he's been huge. Keith Urban, actually, I reached out to him a few times um, and he's been there in a, for me in, in ways that I, I could never really truly speak. I mean, it's, it's just, he's been a profound influence, but also just mentor mm -hmm. to me in, in multiple ways. Sure, so, what's yeah. one of the things like that you talked about with Elton that was a struggle that you threw hmm. you for a loop and then you like what um, would have been some I guess of the actual hurdles and well just the just the business side like I love the music side the business side is something I'm not good at okay and I don't anticipate yeah. being good at it and I don't really want to be either uh -huh. um, my brain is designed to be my brain doesn't work well when it's turned on my brain works best when it's turned off mm -hmm. um, so learning how to turn it off and learning when it's okay to has been really um, it's been challenging you know, yeah, interesting. and and Elton was 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 really vocal in saying like, forget about it, like don't don't worry about that, D just 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 do you. And there was like one particular hard decision, and I don't want to go into detail, yeah. details, but he was like, just he said, just do it, do it, forget about it, don't think about it, just do it, and trust me, you'll never have to do it again. You know, and it, mm -hmm. it was really it was really profound the way he said it oh, in nice. this like 15 second phone call. Yeah. So I do also want to um, get back to Nashville um, mm -hmm. because Virgin is actually opening up a hotel in Nashville. I think really I've heard rumors for yeah, a long time. It's happening yeah. and they want to create like the perfect speakeasy for musicians. So like <gasps> after a long day at the studio. That's going to be incredible. <laughs> I'm so excited we need that. After a long day at the studio, like mm -hmm. what are you looking for in like a place like to hang out? Like what's on the perfect playlist. Honestly, I think in Nashville, the perfect playlist is just like an eighth inch cable where you can plug in your phone and actually create your own playlist. Yeah, <laughs> because yeah. I feel like one thing that we do on the bus is we all like, when we start, right, it's just passing the cable around. And actually, mm -hmm. it's not passing the cable around. You pass the cable around to the first person. The first person hogs it for the rest of the night. Uh, yeah, right. They just play you all the random stuff on their playlist. But um, I think that would be like the perfect like Nashville speakeasy where like you could actually create your own uh -huh. playlist. Okay. Um, at the end of the day, at this, you know, at the studio, you're inspired by something so random, mm -hmm. so random, like the most unexpected thing. Um, what were we listening to last night? Last night, I think we were, last night actually, we were getting back into the One Republic record. Oh. So Ryan Tedder just put out this letter um, a couple of weeks ago talking about this Oh My My record. And so I brought it back out. I've been jamming it pre-show every night, and so is the rest of the band. And um, so we've been kind of digging into that record. Now that it's, uh, you should read his letter. It's pretty okay, profound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty incredible. What is, I guess, your creative process? Is it true, like, the best songs sometimes are just like you come up with in like 20 minutes? I'm sure you've read the books. We all have, you know, all the, you know, work efficiently, all the, you know, <laughs> the subtle art of not giving an F, you know, all yeah, that stuff. Yeah. Like, I've definitely read that and it's incredible. Um, but I feel like, yeah, the best songs happen when you're not trying, right? It's the turn the brain off, let the heart speak thing. Mm -hmm. um, as cheesy as that sounds, I think that's when true music is actually created. That's when real records are made. Yeah. And all of my favorite songs, you know, I went crazy. Uh, wanted um, uh, yesterday song. Yesterday song, we thought about it a little bit. We definitely, mm -hmm. we definitely went there because it was, it was a heavy song. It, despite the sounds of it, it's a pretty heavy yeah. subject. Uh, for me, it's not just about a breakup. It's about kind of a life change. Um, but yeah, the best songs absolutely happen when you're not, when you're not processing. Uh -huh. and you're just kind of like emoting. This is kind of random, but just popped into my head. Go for it. Do you, um, do you meditate? I'm not capable of turning it off for more than like 30 seconds at a time. <laughs> So I've, I've practiced, I've tried, it but I'm not like good at it. That, it almost seems like that process, though, is kind of like meditating for you. You know what's like meditating? I'll tell you what's like meditating. I just realized this a couple, I guess a couple nights ago, was, was the show. Yes. The show is yes. the only place where you are truly in touch with your inner self. You can't be more present then. You don't have a choice. Yeah, you don't. <laughs> because right. you're on stage. You don't have the time to think through anything you do. That's why I love solos. It's like nothing is planned. And you have to be so plugged in. Right. You have to be so present and so aware of of everything, and yet unaware. Um, not to get all philosophical, but it's but that's oh, like that, that that's why I think that's why I like performing so yeah. much, and that's why I, I live for that element the most, is because that's the one place where you are truly, undeniably yourself. Yeah. If you could have a drink with anyone, and they could be like dead or alive, mm -hmm. who would it be? I would love to have a drink with, this will change, I'm sure, every day, but I would love to have a drink with Garth. Garth shaped so much of like my 
childhood, <laughs> like watching him on stage, like all the live concert specials. And yeah. Just everything about him was just so, it was so real. It was so like kind of present and, and just vulnerable. But at the same time, he was like this bigger than life figure, you yeah. know what I mean, to me. And it still is every time I meet him. And I would love to just sit down with him for more than it. Because we talked a little bit. Like he's been another mentor to me in a, in, in, in a way. And But I'd love to just sit down with him one night just like with no schedule, yeah. with nothing on the books, and just kind of pick his brain about his entire career. Well, yeah. cheers again. Cheers. Congrats to all your success. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Hunter Hayes here on A Drink With. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>